everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about advanced calculus. In this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about Rule's Theorem. So before we talk about Rule's Theorem, let's talk about calculus. Now calculus has pretty much applications everywhere in the field of engineering and science. Now calculus has three main sections, limits, derivatives, and integrals. Now these are three foundational principles that make up calculus. Now derivatives and integrals are used everywhere. Derivatives to find the rate of change, the slope, and integrals to find the area under a curve. And can it be even used in three dimensions? Now derivatives and integrals are used a lot. Now limits are used a lot too, but not as much as derivatives and integrals. Now Rule's theorem essentially is heavy on differentiation because it uses a lot of differential calculus. Now, Rolle's theorem just doesn't use differentiation and differential calculus. It also uses functions. Now, in advanced calculus specifically, it essentially takes derivatives, integrals, and limits, but extends them further to a geometric representation and an algebraic representation. And it includes a heavy aspect on functions, because when we take a function, put it graphically, we can understand a lot about the function from the graph then doing some algebraic manipulations to it. So it's important to realize that Rolle's theorem establishes a kind of connection between an algebraic manipulation and representation to a graphical representation. So that's one of Rolle's theorem's specialties. Now, Rolle's theorem is very important in advanced calculus because it essentially, as I said, draws on the specialty and is very important graphically as well as algebraically too. Now that's what advanced calculus is. It essentially takes each of the concepts, limits, derivatives, and integrals, extends them further, both geometrically and algebraically. Okay, so now let's start talking about Rolle's theorem. So here are the three laws that are essentially describing Rolle's theorem. Now notice that for advanced, the, the book we got this from is Advanced Calculus, David V. Witter. Now as you can see here, these three laws are essentially very important to essentially look at because these three laws is that you can describe continuity very simply. Okay, so let's actually begin by talking about the verbal description or the verbal basis for, for Rolle's theorem. Now how this works is that we have two points. So let's say, so consider that we have two points. Now these two points have the same y value. Now this is essentially the first starting point of Rolle's theorem. If they both have the same y value, then we can start to send some of Rolle's theorem coming in. Now, if those two points have the same y value, we can start looking at Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's theorem says the function that we're dealing with must be continuous, and it also must be differential. Now, this is what Rolle's theorem states. So, these essentially three principles are what Rolle's theorem is based on. One, the y values of the two points must be the same, and two, the function must be continuous, and three, the function must be differentiable. Now that's essentially what Rolle's theorem is based on. Once we've got that, we can actually start doing a specific amount of algebraic manipulations and problems. So and once we know that a function is continuous or differentiable, and that they have this, and the points that we're dealing with have the same y value, we can start applying Rolle's theorem. And the third and the final step is essentially, or you could say fourth final step, is essentially just trying to give us the final verdict. So what it's saying is that, well, if those previous conditions are essentially satisfied, then if we take the derivative and we, and we set that equal to zero and we solve, there will be a point in which the slope is zero between A and B. So that's essentially what Rolle's theorem is proposing. Now, the verbal description might seem a little bit tedious, but at the same time, it's very important when we look at the algebraic situation. So let's now start defining things. So we're going to be stating A and B to be our two points. So A and B are our two points. So wherever you see A and B, we're thinking of our two points. Next, the f of x f of x must be in the continuous class of functions. Now, what this pretty much just implies is f of x is continuous. That's pretty much what this is saying, continuous. Now, f prime of x is stating differentiability. Now, it must be differentiable. And 
And the third and final step, we'll carve to call the verdict. It states that if the y values are the same, then there's going to be a point, which is in A and B, that if we take the derivative and we plug it in, it'll equal zero. That's essentially what Wolf's theorem is saying. Now you might be wondering, what is continuity or continuous? What is differentiability or differentiable? Well, the book Advanced Calculus by David B. Witter again once kind of defines this. It says that in continuity, the, the specific point or the specific area that we're dealing with, each, it must be defined. Now, one of the examples given in the book is 1 over 0. If we so just say we, in the function, we get 1 over 0, for instance. Now, if we have 1 over 0 at the point, obviously it can't be defined there because this is undefined. Now, it must be defined. So the key 1 over 0 indeterminate forms are pretty much any of the confusing things. Now, the, you can use 1 over 0, and how we get this is undefined as rubble limits. When we approach from the right side, from the right side to when we approach from, for example, let's just say the greater numbers, we get positive infinity. Once we get from the negative numbers, we get negative infinity. So this pretty much just makes sense, and therefore it's undefined. So this actually deals with limits. The reason why 1 over 0 is undefined is heavy on limits. So continuity must be defined there. Another way to think about continuity, which is commonly expressed, is just, let's just say we have a function. And let's just say the function is like this, or something like that. When you draw it, the pen or a marker, for instance, must not be taken off. So you must, so you can't do this. It has to be continuous. So you have to keep on drawing. So your hand must not be taken off. If it's like that, then you could say it's continuous. Or you could just infer from the definition, from the word itself, continuous. It doesn't have any breaking points. That's essentially not continuous. Is. Now we will talk about more about continuity in future videos because continuity is also an advanced calculus and regular calculus too, but involves tons and tons of limits. So that's one of the specialties. Okay, that's continuity. Differentiability, as it implies, is just it has to be differentiable. Now, if it's differentiable, then obviously we can do Wolf's theorem. So if it's not differentiable, then we can't do it. So if something is differentiable, then and continuous, and there's two points with your y value equals the same, then you can do Wolf's theorem. Okay. Now, as you can see over here, we have continuity, contin continuity, differentiability, and we have the final verdict, which states that the two points y values must be equal. Then we can do some algebraic manipulations to find the essential point. Now, as you can see over here, we have these inequalities over here. So let's explain the inequalities. So A and B are, are going to be our two points, as mentioned. So A and B. Now, it's important to realize that x is going to just be, for example, our verb. We're just saying that A is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to B. So we're just kind of just saying that as a substitute for now. So these inequalities are just saying that we must have, for example, so we, let's just say we have A and then B, and let's just say this is a number line, that it's a closed value, so it's from here to here. That's what it's kind of saying. So X can just be, for example, our random point. And the same over here, F prime of X exists, so A is less than or equal to X, which is not less than or equal to B. Now, x isn't a specific set value, it's just saying that it, so a probably has to be less than b, and b has to be greater than a, and the inside of that, so what it's saying that, let's just say we have a function like this. Well, let's say it's more con continuous like that. Then, if we have a and b, then it must, so we have it like this, it must be differentiable from here because it's like this, but if it has the equal signs, then obviously it can be from here. So x is just kind of saying the range of values, okay? So x is not specific a specific set value, it's just a range of values between a and b, that's what it's kind of saying. So kind of like an arbitrary variable. Now as you can see over here, we have f of a equals f of b, f prime of this essential letter, which we will talk about in a little bit, but this is saying that a is less than or equal to this, which is less than or equal to b. Now, what this is saying is that there will be 
a specific number, for instance, and this specific point, or let's just call it a point, at this specific point, there the essential the curve or the slope at that point will be zero. So the slope will be zero. So that's essentially what we're saying in this statement. And that point is represented by this, and it's between A and B. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, let's actually start doing some problems over here. So we can start erasing this. And so let's look at our the first problem. You know, it's important to realize that all polynomials are both continuous and differentiable. Now, if we know all polynomials are continuous and differentiable, then obviously we don't need to consider this. When you go to deal with very hard problems in advanced calculus, and we actually have to determine if it's differentiable or continu continuous, and I will talk more about that in in, in viewers that in vi in videos that will be coming up, but. In those videos, I'll be talking about continuity and differentiability. Now, if we take those specific types of statements and expressions and conjectures and apply it to this specific type of uh, to tool theorem, it'll take a lot of work because we have to determine if the function is continuous, if the function is differentiable, and then we actually have to go and actually calculate Wool's process, the Wool's theorem. Now, this is going to be taking a long time, but now if we have a polynomial, of all polynomials are continuous and differentiable. So this is one of the most important specialties and we'll see, and especially polynomials just itself. In polynomials, if you see a polynomial, it's continuous and differentiable. Okay, so 4x squared, skip the first two steps, in 1 and minus 1. So 1 and minus 1, obviously, they're going to equal pretty much the same thing, because the y values have to be the same. 1 squared is 1, 4, and minus 1, and minus 1 squared is 1, and so forth. So we got 4 and 4. So that's pretty much simple. Now, we just have to pretty much essentially get the verdict part off of this. Okay, so how do we utilize the verdict part? Well, first, we know that they're equal. As we said, it's just 4 and 4. Now, we have to apply. Now we have to apply. We have to first take the derivative of this, and then we have to set it equal to 0, and then solve. So let's do that. So the derivative of 4x squared is 8x, not 8x, must equal to 0. Now we can divide by 8. And 0 over 8 can be done, which is just 0. So x equals 0. Now since x equals 0, this pretty much just sums up pretty much everything. x is equal to 0. Now, since x is equal to 0, what does this pretty much mean to us? Well, at the point x equals 0, the point x equals 0, the slope will be 0. That's essentially what they're saying. At the point x equals 0, if we check graphically, the slope will be 0. Okay. Now, let's do for the next problem. 4x squared plus 24x, 1 and negative 7. Okay. So, let's check. 1, 1, 1 squared is 1. 4, so 4 plus 24, because it's just 1, it's going to be 28. So we got 28 minus 7. Now this involves some arithmetic. So minus 7 times minus 7 is 49. 49 times 4 is 196. Now 196 minus tw or plus 24 times negative 7 is 24 times negative 7. 4 times 7 is 28. 2 times 7 is essentially 14. 14 plus 2 is 16. And minus, so minus 168. So plus negative 168. This in turn is just 196 minus 168, which gives us, this will be 16, this will be 8, this will be... 8, which is 2, and these cancel. So we got 28. So we got 28 for minus 7 and 28 for 1. So therefore, obviously, these are the same. So we, we got third step. We know that polynomials are differentiable and continuous, and we've got this. So now we can actually start working. So Wolf's theorem does apply. So let's actually start working with this. 
So the derivative of 4x squared plus 24x is 8x plus 24. And we're setting this equal to 0. So 8x is equal to, we subtract 24 from both sides. We got minus 24 over 8 over 8. x is equal to minus 3. So x is equal to minus 3. Now, if we check minus 3, we can obviously see that x at x equals minus 3, the slope will be 0. So let's just check. So if we plug in minus 3 squared is 9, 9 equals 36. Well, 9 equals 36, obviously. Well, we can't plug it into the original. We have to plug it into the derivative. So minus 3 times 8 is 24, uh, negative 24. Negative 24 plus 24 is 0. So as you can see, minus 3 is going to be our answer. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, we can make this video to an end. If you like this video, if you like this channel, please subscribe to learn more. Thank you.